first step to the long road to recovery is to remove all bloom spikes if the orchid is in bloom. Some orchids bloom for a considerable amount of time and that really drains the energy out of the orchid. Removing the spikes will allow your orchid to rest earlier and build up strength for what is to come. Basically, you are planning ahead and giving the orchid the opportunity to maintain what storage organs she has. No matter how big the orchid is, the symptoms of a stressed orchid are evident and I will point those out later on. But first things first. Luckily, our stressed candidates are a mature and established dendrobium and some Oncidium Alliance orchids because I can clearly show you that no matter the size, no matter how many structures any orchid would appear to have, the stress signs are evident and with that, my dendrobium has produced cakeys which are also draining the mother plant. So the next step to the road to recovery for an orchid that is growing cakeys, for example, when it really shouldn't anymore, is that we have to remove them. Even if they're not full size, cakeys drain a lot of energy from the mother plant and by removing them, not only can we pot them up if they are mature and grow them onto another specimen orchid in the future, but you're saving your orchid from the stress of having to sustain their well-being even while the cakeys are not mature. In order for the cakeys to mature to size, they will pull a lot of energy from the mother plant. The third step to recovery is to care for the orchid as per her new status of no spikes and no new growths during the interim phase before new growth start. At this stage, I recommend that you supplement with a lot of CalMag and seaweed as per the size of the orchid. And if you have questions based on the size of your orchid that you may need to start babying to recovery, then please let me know in the comments which orchid you have that you're concerned about, what size your orchid is, and information about your environment and set up. Alternatively, I am going to leave the link to an orchid's detail form in the description, which is extremely detailed as per the information you can complete by way of multiple choice, and once filled out, you can even send me five images. This is the best way that I can see what is going on with your orchid and the best course of action for your specific case. Now, if your orchid has new growth starting even while in bloom, with the spikes removed, the energy can now focus on the new growths and the care can be targeted to promote their health. The fourth step is to wait before going to the fifth step. Please do not repot your orchid thinking that it will help your struggling orchid by providing new media and doing the whole root system cleanup by giving her a fresh start. Your fourth step is to wait. Make sure your orchid does not get any pest infestations because weakened orchids are prone to attacks. Your fifth step will only come into effect when your orchid shows signs of active growth. That is when you supplement with calcium nitrate, continue with the seaweed, and fertilize as per what you would have done in the past years while the orchid was growing well. But I do put an emphasis on calcium nitrate because that is going to help with growing strong new growths for what comes next, which is your sixth step the repot, the root system cleanup. But know that you should only intervene once you know that new roots are growing on your new growth. Chances are the older root system is not going to be viable anymore, so it is an absolute must that new roots are on the way when you repot. I highly recommend that you do not get too tempted to remove all the leafless structures to make the orchid look tidy again. Unless, of course, they have been completely depleted. Even a shriveled pseudobulb, even a shriveled cane, has a lot of energy stored in it and it will serve its purpose in providing for the orchid during the months ahead. If any structures are depleted while your orchid recovers, you can always remove those at a later stage to make the orchid look more tidy again. Step seven is care for the orchid as per her preferences when it comes to temperature, light and fertilizer. However, when it comes to the light requirement that the orchid needs to grow well while healthy, it may just be a little too much while the orchid is on her road to recovery. So dial that down a little bit to not introduce a stress factor that could prove too much for her to handle at this stage. And know that it may take more than one growing cycle for your orchid to be fully rehabilitated. Before we get into the symptoms that you should be looking out for to assess if your orchid is showing signs of possible stress ahead, I would so appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up as well as a vote of confidence by subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for that additional support. 
So what you've been looking at are the symptoms that your orchids will display when something is not quite right. Abnormal shriveling of pseudobulbs. The shriveling of pseudobulbs also applies to canes that shouldn't be shriveling. Premature leaf drop. Then if your orchid has had some form of pest that has started to weaken it, you will see it on the leaves. My mus I read had a little mealybug and the odd scale crawler, but there's more going on here that I'm not used to seeing on her. I have other insidiums that are starting to show similar behavior and well well, the consistent decline of the pseudobulbs with markings on the leaves is very alarming. These are the symptoms that I can determine that are not normal, they are unusual, and they have not been a factor on these orchids in the past years. They have only just recently developed. So in order to help my Masa Red out, give her some rest because of what her leaves are displaying, she is going into recovery mode. The same with my Golden Red Star. I just want to add a disclaimer here. There is no guarantee that any of these insidiums are going to make it because what is going on here could be a virus that has been transferred by way of pests. So these are my suspicions as other insidiums are showing the same affliction. But I'm going to be cautiously optimistic. However, if she doesn't make it, I do not want that to reflect on the steps of initiating the recovery of an orchid as not being valid. Now, if you know that your orchid is going to go through a big and harsh repot because needs must, as with my cymbidium, then I highly recommend you implement the steps mentioned earlier as well. Even though your orchid may not be displaying any signs of stress, everything is looking just fine, the fact that she's on the schedule for a massive intervention is enough of a reason to get her to rest as soon as possible to conserve energy before the stress actually happens. And if you're thinking about your collection, think ahead and know that your orchid may go into shock after the massive repot, but at least she will have healthy and strong storage organs to draw from from after such a massive intervention is done. I hope that the information in this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Your time is appreciated. Have yourself a fabulous day on the condition that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.